uh, one which uh, represents a significant development among civil society organisations that need to really work together to provide an alternative to, to the economic policies uh, that we are currently witnessing. I'd just like to take a brief moment to, to pause and ask the question, what does Plan A look like and where is Plan A going to take us uh, in the next few years? And uh, if you look at the International Monetary Fund projections uh, to the year 2017, you can see there a projection that public expenditure in Ireland will decrease from its current level of approximately 44% of GDP to 36% in 2017. But there's an important uh, component of that which we must be aware of, that the projection for 2017 by the IMF envisages that 5.5% of GDP will be spent in interest on public uh, borrowings. So the amount left over for public services in 2017, if these projections um, uh, turn out to be true, will be just a little bit over 30%. Now, I've done a calculation for all EU countries, all 27 member states, and if this projection is realized, we will have the lowest percentage of GDP spent by public authorities on frontline services uh, and income support, the lowest of any EU uh, member country in 2017. Furthermore, the proportion of investment at 11% in 2017 will be the lowest of any uh, European uh, member state. The IMF project an unemployment rate for Ireland in excess of 11% by the year 2017. Uh, I would calculate that probably about 8 percentage points of that will be long-term unemployment, in effect long-term structural unemployment at that stage, and unfortunately many, many people condemned to long-term unemployment. So these are just some uh, uh, aspects, uh, as I would phrase it, of, of Plan A. And I think we really do need to look at the alternatives. Uh, immediately in front of us is the prospect of further cuts in public spending of 5.5 billion over three years, of which uh, 1.7 billion is expected from current spending this December, and a further 600,000 in capital, uh, public capital expenditure now, in Europe, we're having a discussion at the moment about investment and the need for stimulus, and this is very welcome, and I look forward to further news in relation to these matters in the next few weeks and months. <coughs> However, I think we need to be careful that, on the one hand, as it is proposed to reduce public capital expenditure, on the other, to somehow increase uh, investment more generally, presumably private investment, we need to be very careful about what is happening to our public services in Europe, and in Ireland in particular. I think also that there's a fallacy very often that cuts equal savings. So if you cut public expenditure by 1 billion euro, uh, you reduce the public sec sector deficit by 1 billion. Now this is uh, obviously not true because for every cut uh, there is a loss in revenue, there's a loss in domestic demand as well. And the SRI have made some estimates that if you cut, for example, the total size of the public sector pay bill, the impact on, on the public sector deficit is probably no more than about 300 million in the long run when you factor in all these other downstream effects. They didn't do a calculation for social welfare payments, but I strongly suspect that the deficit saving for social welfare payments would be even less because the multiplier impact in the local economy on the part of low-income households uh, is obviously much higher. So these are major challenges. In terms of where we go and how to bring about fiscal sustainability with social justice and with sustainable economic and social development, the answer has to be a combination of growth policies and revenue increasing policies, as other speakers have mentioned, in relation to high income households and high wealth households. We should be using, uh, we should be referring to a wealth tax. Uh, it, it's forbidden to refer to the issue of wealth tax, it seems to me, at this time, uh, except, of course, for uh, the household charges and, and local property taxes. We need to think about taxation and revenue much more broadly, not just about raising tax rates, but growing the economy so that revenue buoyancy over time can have an impact on the deficit. Now, our own calculations, uh, which we will be publishing later this week in our Quarterly Economic Observer on, on Wednesday, 
will show uh, what is the pathway here that is possible to a 3% deficit by the year 2017. So, in effect, uh, we're proposing an extension of the adjustment period and holding public expenditure at roughly 43 to 45%. <coughs> now, in conclusion, uh, you may wonder where did this 45% figure come from? Because it's in the Plan B leaflet. And the answer is very simple. Um, I'm not suggesting that we should aim for Scandinavian uh, levels of public services in, in the near future. I'm just merely suggesting here that we should aim for European norms of expenditure and revenue. And average European expenditure by the state is 49% uh, at the moment, projected to fall to 45% uh, by the year 2017. In the case of Ireland, as I've explained already, if we continue on this present uh, disastrous course of, of policy, it will fall to 36%, with huge implications for the quality and the quantity of our public services, not to mention income inequality and well-being of communities. So, in conclusion, uh, by holding expenditure at its current level of close to 43% or 44% of GDP and gradually increasing uh, the revenue take towards European average norms, let's become more like the Germans, actually. Let's, let's have German rates of taxation and expenditure, but let's do it in a fair way and in a way that is economically sustainable. One very final comment. It's often said, it's often claimed that somehow we have no choice. This, this was entirely uh, imposed externally. Uh, this is not the case because um, the concern of the um, lending organizations, the ECB, the IMF, and the European Commission, is that we reduce our deficit over time and that we reduce the ratio of debt to GDP. Now, the way that is done is entirely a domestic political choice, and it so happens that the plan inherited prior to uh, December 2010 was to reduce public expenditure dramatically as a percentage of GDP and to stabilize revenue uh, roughly around the 36% uh, level. So if you actually um, look at these issues, um, because the programme of government, uh, or correction, the memorandum of understanding, does evolve and change uh, from quarter to quarter, not dramatically, but it's quite possible that we will be looking at a significant renegotiation and a re-evaluation of that agreement in the course of time, especially if we're faced with a second bailout. And in this context, I think it's extremely important that this initiative, which is very welcome, that it actually raises a debate about what sort of society we are aiming for in the short term and in the long term as well. Thank you.